Good morning, uh, colleagues and friends. Promises, promises. So on the screen, you can see some of the sustainable goals uh, and targets that countries of the world will commit to achieving by 2030. Um, to, as we now leave the era of the Millennium Development Goals and enter the post-2015 Sustainable Development Era. I say will commit to because it's not quite yet a done deal. The decision will be taken in September, as we heard. Um, and uh, some countries and actors have been uh, insisting that we need to cut this current set of 17 goals and 169 targets, uh, make some big changes, but others have been insisting that they should be left just as they are. So sustainable development. Johan called it the whole bloody thing. <laughs> I would suggest it's a really love and hate word for many of us. I think some of us love it because it gives us hope, vision, um, and it's a glue in world politics in a way. Some of us hate it because it's just too broad, too vague, and doesn't provide a clear roadmap for making tough trade-offs and, and choices. Likewise, some of us see it as a technical, quite harmless concept that's safe in the hands of bureaucrats, corporate divisions, but others see it as a really contested idea, a very politically charged idea that can have significant implications in terms of the distribution of costs and benefit across societies. Nevertheless, it has stuck around now for some decades and uh, this latest manifestation of sustainable development is what we're going to talk about now. So, where do these goals come from? Uh, agreement was made in Rio in 2012 to develop these goals as part of the post-2015 agenda, which also includes this uh, negotiation track on finance for development uh, that we heard about, the conference coming up in July, and also dialogue on technology facilitation. So, an open working group was established, um, consisting of 30 countries, to develop a proposal which they presented in August last year, and that has now been negotiated uh, among all the member states. A zero draft was actually presented just two days ago, uh, which will continue pre to be negotiated uh, until September. So, there has been intense debate, not just among the member states, but the whole bigger uh, community. Uh, over the past couple of years around the definition of these goals. Uh, and there is currently a lot of hype around 2015 as this decision-making year, decisive opportunity. But in the next hour, we really like to um, look what will happen and what needs to happen when the rubber hits the road. So we want to turn this from a post-2015 discussion agenda to a pre-2030 action agenda. So we'll start this uh, conversation with three short talks um, by SER colleagues. Uh, Mons Nielsen will first give a little background and some of the principles and thinking that went into the process. Then we have Nina Weitz, who will share some findings uh, from looking at implementation prospects on the ground from two different countries. And finally, we'll have Chris West, who will talk about the role of business. Um, so the Millennium Development Goals were sometimes criticized for excluding the business sector, not realizing the huge impact it has on development. Uh, so what could the business community do this time? And then the second part of this session will be a panel discussion, where we will have some different perspectives on implementation and uh, ask this central question, what could the SDGs actually change? So with this introduction, I'd like to invite Mons to the stage. Uh, he's research director of SEI and has been leading SEI's involvement in the uh, Independent Research Forum, uh, excuse me, the IRF, uh, which has been organizing seven retreats for negotiators in New York over the past two years, which has given them an informal space for dialogue and also uh, provided knowledge inputs and he also contributed to a major scientific assessment of the goals and targets uh, coordinated by the International Council for Science. Mats. Thank you, Osa. Um, so, just two days ago, the UN machine